Hope I got that all right. Anyway, today is St. Jean-Baptiste Day, which is uh, quite a big deal here in Quebec. So I thought we would have a Quebec-based special. So we're going to be running uh, a whole bunch of locomotives from different railroads that are uh, based out of the province. So we've got uh, Via, which is headquartered in Montreal, Cien, which is headquartered in Montreal, Grand Trunk, which is headquartered in Montreal, the Quebec and Gatineau Railway, which I believe might be based out of Quebec City. I could be wrong about that, but uh, it's definitely from the province, a uh, division of Genesee and Wyoming. But yeah, anyway, I thought we'd do a uh, special for that. And of course we have the uh, Quebec train itself going. So uh, if you guys want to, uh, any locomotives I've missed out, just as long as they're from one of these railways, I'll run them. And uh, yeah, we'll have some uh, fun with that. We got a whole bunch of people joining in right now. I'm going to set it to live chat. Hopefully I don't miss anybody's messages. It's been a while since the last stream. Yeah, it has been a bit of time. Joseph Batts, how's it going? I'm well, how are you? Northern Country Railroad, welcome. Let's do a couple laps and then I think we'll uh, start putting on some of the other locomotives. Hey Harrison, has anything exciting happened? There's, uh, there's some stuff in the works, but uh, yeah, tonight just having some fun celebrating the holiday. Just, uh, chilling for a live stream. I've got a video uh, coming out tomorrow, which will hopefully be released which may be buying shady model trains on eBay, so that should be something uh, interesting. Ontario Rail Frame Productions, how's it going? Oh, I can't complain, how are you? How's the Hershey factory? Not finished, I need to finish that thing up. There has been progress on it, but uh, I got a bit delayed with some uh, materials, so that's uh, set things back a bit, and timing is... It's not exactly been great, but hopefully I'll get that back on track. I think I want to get it done by August. DB Tech, hey Harrison, I was watching The Office. That's a terrific show. What's funny is that I'm watching this live stream and operating my own trains. I find that's the best way to watch live streams, honestly. It's like, you know, I work on a project on your layout and stuff, and it's like you're talking with the model railroading community while you're working on your layout. It doesn't get better than that. David Z to G Scale, welcome. To see all the exciting trains, there's a fair amount of them. Gotta say, you do a fantastic job fixing old model trains. Thank you so much. I really do uh, enjoy doing that, and uh, I try to improve. Not, uh, you know, the best out there, obviously, but, uh, yeah, gotta learn. Hey, SMT, I got my Gilbert Hudson working, as well as both smoke generators, generator and motor. Very nice. You ever do a video of running all your largest locomotives? That's an interesting idea. I hadn't really thought of that one. Uh, what's the deal with that brown train that always sits on the bridge near all the factories? Uh, oh, that's just a military train. It's been uh, just here parked for a while. Unless you're talking about this one. These are all uh, foreign cars. So they're kind of cool. They just can't be operated with most of my equipment. Uh, is there an option to request join another live stream on YouTube? So, would you? I don't know if there's uh, an option to do that. I know you can do that through StreamYards, but I've uh, never done it with uh, YouTube. How many locomotives did you restore on your channel? I don't know. I would have to go through and add them all up one day, I guess. It's got to be over 100 at this point, at least I would imagine so.
Can you run your Wakefield train? Yeah, absolutely. This was a train which was operated in Quebec, so uh, yeah, it fits the bill. We'll just get this one off the uh, main line and uh, we'll operate some other stuff. What's the oldest model train you fixed? Well, my grandmother's 1951 River Rossi Hiawatha is the oldest I'm aware of. There has been some... I've got some old Varney stuff I've worked on, but I don't know the exact year, so it might be older than that. Um, but I know that that one is a, a 1951 just because uh, basically when I had to buy parts, it turned out there were variations throughout the year. Uh, and uh, this one was a 51, so that's the deal with that. Do you ever plan on buying a British locomotive? I'd love to get more British equipment. Absolutely. I don't find it tends, it's, it's not terribly common here in Canada and a lot of it's expensive and usually I go for more budget pieces of equipment, especially when it's not as special because I'm just less familiar uh, with it. But uh, yeah. What is St. Jean Baptiste Day? Uh, you mentioned it last year. Well, it's a celebration of John the Baptist, uh, and it also happens to be a uh, very big holiday here in Quebec. Uh, for uh, people who are less familiar, it may, uh, maybe in different parts of Canada, it's pretty much Quebec's equivalent of Canada Day or America's equivalent of Fourth of July. It's taken very seriously here, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Got uh, actual, uh, I, I don't know where these couplers came from. I, I have a feeling I wasn't supposed to use them. I think they were for something else. But anyway, I put them on this locomotive and they work great. So that's something I'm pretty happy about. Anyway, I think I'll make this a three-card train just for... Just to make things a little easier here. All right, let's get these all hooked up. I think I want to buy more of these train cars, these uh, actual Swedish ones, because it would be nice to uh, complete the train. I mean, the other ones look okay. I just prefer these ones. They just seem a lot more authentic. They had some other ones for sale, and I didn't buy them at the time because uh, I didn't really have the funds. Like, it wouldn't have been a good choice is basically what I'm saying. And you know, I thought about it, and I was like, you know, maybe I should buy these because at the same time, you know, they're cheaper than most of them are. And... Uh, then uh, that's what it that's what it turned out to be. So now they're gone, unfortunately. It's only doing Quebec chain. A hundred dollars super chat. What the heck? <laughs> wow. Uh, Rayron VR. Thank you so much. Cheers, mate. Have a train on me. That's ridiculously generous of you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a bunch. Wow. Sort of spontaneous, but uh, yeah, really nice. Wow. All right, I think we have uh, the whole train set up. Let's get this thing rolling. Uh, hey, SMT, you remember a couple of months ago I ordered a German train and it finally arrived. Congratulations. Uh. <laughs> How's the blank factory going? The chocolate factory is, uh, it's coming along. It needs a fair bit more work to get it done, but uh, it's probably about 85% done. That's about where I'd put it. It's getting, it's pretty close. Learned a lot. Well, thank you. Super moon today, I went for a run to see it here in Kingston. I was fixing an own scale engine for a friend. When this started, I will catch this first. I have a British auto coach coming in from Amazon soon this week. Do you think you can run the Hershey factory train? This episode, I'm just running trains uh, that operated in Quebec or the, the railways headquartered in Quebec. But uh, in the next stream, I'll, I could probably do that. Hey, are there any trains running in Gatineau? There's not a lot. Uh, Gatineau is eventually going to build a light rail system, so we'll have that. Uh, but there is one, uh, the Quebec and Gatineau uh, operates a train which uh, services a uh, paper plant at the edge of town. Not a lot of people know about that, but it is actually within uh, Gatineau, so 
that's as far as they go. They used to go to uh, Dom Tar's EB Eddy plant, uh, but that closed in 07, so uh, the railway hasn't been active. I miss it when it was, though, because then they used to actually drive the trains, you know, into basically downtown Gatineau. It was really interesting. Loved, uh, loved watching that as a kid. That'd be pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Do you know of Sam's Trains? Yeah, I watch Sam's Trains. Pretty, pretty good YouTuber, I would say. S style of content. It's not 100% my taste, just the way he edits his videos and stuff. But they're not bad videos. They're very well done, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of his advice, I find, is really good, too. So, uh, yeah, overall, I find a very uh, respectable uh, member of the model railroading community. Can we get a rail fanning POV? Yeah. In the garden. Oh, look at that. Do you know if you can buy handrails? I think you can. I don't know where you would look exactly, but there's people always building all sorts of models from scratch, so they must get them from somewhere. For this model, what I did was I kind of cheated. I just took a whole bunch of old Atherin ones and then put some wire through them. It turned out fine. Pretty happy with it. They're not perfect, but I don't know if I have the skills to make them much better. I love watching this thing go around. I have to get a decoder in that. Well, I want to get a decoder in both of them, but again, hobby shop's been closed, and I actually want to have uh, Rajan, who knows how to do this stuff properly, install the decoder, because I don't want to mess it up, and I want to put a sound decoder in this locomotive, so uh, I don't have the equipment to actually load up custom sounds, which is what I want to do. I want this thing to have authentic sounds, because despite it being a Swedish steam locomotive, uh, the bell and whistle were actually Canadian. Uh, I think they were both taken off Canadian Pacific steam locomotives that were being scrapped. And, uh, so the sounds are not, you can't just load, you know, regular S Swedish steam, uh, whistle sounds onto it. It won't sound correct. I like the video of the store visit where he had to go in the back door. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I went to uh, the store and the mall was closed. And I was like, well, how are you supposed to access the store? And on, on the front of the mall, it said to get to the store, you had to go around the side. And I'm like, what are they talking about? So I walked around and I saw one sign. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to keep going. And then it like led you through somebody's backyard to get in the store. It's like, okay, here it is. But it made for an interesting experience. My GP18 is broken. Do you have any advice? Well, if you can tell me what manufacturer it is, uh, I might be able to help you a bit just because uh, some manufacturers' uh, products have, you know, recurring problems. So that might be helpful. Uh, hey, SMT, what is your favorite locomotive that you have in your collection? It, it's like trying to choose between your kids. Not that I have any, but... Um, it's probably the Hiawatha, I would say. I don't know. I, I couldn't I couldn't choose between them if some somebody told me you have to throw one out or something like that. But uh, the Hiawatha is pretty special. I mean, first of all, uh, it's been in the family the longest because it actually belonged to my grandmother who had it back in the 1950s. And then I was the one who ultimately ended up restoring it. It actually got me into restoring model trains and uh it created this channel so yeah and it's uh, just a beautiful engine so this one's a uh, very very special yeah that store looked kind of shady from the back dude to the sign of the road saying trains here <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm expecting it to be uh one of those uh cartoon scenes out of a movie like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang where it looks like you're going into the store and instead it's into the back of a truck and then they drive you away or something. It didn't seem, uh, it didn't seem good. Uh, especially going through somebody's backyard. I was expecting somebody to be like, hey, what are you doing here? But, hey, whatever it takes to keep the store going, I guess. You should get one of those Hornby Eurostar sets. Those trains are so beautiful. Yeah, maybe so. 
I'm pretty excited. I did get one, uh, well, it's a French train, actually. It's one of those Wego uh, sets from Mahano. I think Sam's Trains might have done a review on them. But anyway, I was on Amazon, and they were selling one of those for 32 euros. Very, very cheap for a set like that. So I think all in all, it cost me, like, 90 Canadian dollars with shipping and everything. Anyway, it arrived, and uh, the box looks like crap. I don't know what happened to it, but I'm really hoping the train set's okay. I, uh, I can't wait to do a video on that. I can't wait for all of you to get to see the box, because it's... Uh, I have no idea what the people shipping it did, but it, it had a rough go, I'll say that. That's Amazon for you. Yeah, Amazon... I don't know, the way they package their stuff is so bizarre. Like, when I got the uh, Daylight locomotive... They threw this engine, it was just wrapped up with a bit of plastic, not bubble wrap, just some plastic. That was thrown in a box with some paper, which was also loose in the box. And the box was like two and a half feet by a foot and a half wide. Like it was a ridiculous box and the engine's just loose in there. So it got damaged during shipping. I, I just don't know what they were thinking. It was really, really weird. I love the box. It says something like, uh, we've uh, reduced the amount of cardboard we put into these boxes uh, to be better for the environment. They're packaging stuff in this mega box. It's, it's so ridiculous. Uh, are you thinking about getting any Bachman Thomas models? Maybe at some point. Probably not, though. I don't know. If I, uh, if I had a junior version of this channel, it, it might be appealing, but personally, no. Oh, they reduced it all right, reduced it to zero. Does anyone else have poor quality video? I hope not, the internet's been a little spotty here. Don't do Thomas, please, no. <laughs> well, I don't think I do Thomas videos on this channel for sure. Again, if I had a, if I had a junior channel, maybe, but... I don't know. Well, I don't think we've run this one enough. We'll take it off and we'll run uh, some of these other fine locomotives. My goal in this live stream is to run every single one of these, so we'll see how successful I am in that uh, goal, but hey, there's only one way to follow through. Oh, video quality seems good. Looks like the normal 720p. Yeah, we've got some top grades, 2007 grade quality. All right. Do you plan on making an 009 or HO in 30 scale layout? They do not fit end gauge track, but were scaled to do HO slash 00, so they are like narrow gauge. A lot of people have been uh, asking about that. I'm certainly curious about it, but I find uh, most of that equipment tends to be quite expensive. So uh, I'm not terribly encouraged. Plus, it would look a little bit weird running, uh, you know, trains which are O scale but running on HO track on, on a layout with all HO scale buildings and everything like that. I don't know. I want to own at least one at some point in my life, but I'm not in a rush. Hopefully I'll just kind of find one at a train show or something. There are some, uh, some things with collecting that I, I want to get sooner rather than later, and there are other things I'm like, yeah, I'll take, uh, I'll take the long road with trying to get one of those. Found a great deal on an N-scale loco, and he said it didn't run, but he ran it on DC. It is a DCC locomotive ran. On my layout, it's a work in progress. And he sold it to me for $25 before he knew it ran. Wow, that was lucky. Yeah, sometimes people just don't know what they're selling. Narrow gauge is kind of an America thing. Pretty sure parts of Canada use narrow gauge for years, but uh, yeah, there are a fair amount throughout the United States. Of course, there's that one in Portland. That, that railway is ridiculously uh, narrow. Sure.
sure all you viewers out in the States must be getting excited. Fourth of July is on its way. Mainly used to narrow gauge my layout, and it's called Tiglin. All right, let's get the Via going here. This thing runs so mint. I was really hoping to uh, buy some of those uh, Walters locomotives when they had them on Amazon going for about 65 bucks a piece. I was pretty excited about that, but uh, unfortunately they've all disappeared. So I don't know what's up with that. That's a long train. Oh, it's something all right. I prefer O skill. I like that it's more big, interesting, and rugged, but I do HO because of money. Well, I don't know if I can see eye to eye about interesting, but yeah, the old uh, Lionel stuff is pretty tough. Heck, I've, I bought that engine right there. I think it was 25 American uh, dollars, and uh, I put a little bit of oil into it and stuff, and it uh, runs fine. And that thing's been going for over 60 years, probably. How do you fix the Taiku gear slash, slash rod that broke at the base? I did a video on that, how to fix the pivot. doesn't usually go very well. I find the best thing to do is to break, is to just buy a new block, but you can always try the method. I have a video on it somewhere. This is literally what American passenger trains are like. It depends what part of the country you're in. Harrison, you need to search up uh, the tail again. Railway, it's in Wales and it's beautiful. Uh, can you run a CN drain pulling all the dummy engines? I don't know if all the dummy engines would even uh, couple up. I got one of those Amazon Walters GP15s for like 30 or 40 dollars as a return product because it needed wheel contacts and I cleaned it, works perfect. No, uh, no details broken. Nice. Uh, I thought about making an O-scale layout, but it just needs way too much room to do anything interesting. Yeah, that's unfortunately one of the drawbacks of O-scale. You know, if you've, if you've got a great big house and uh, somebody who's, <laughs> you know, that maybe you own or somebody that's willing to hand some of it over, then uh, it's not really a problem. But, uh, I mean, even this little loop right here takes up a fair bit of space. If I wanted, like, that right there is pretty much a 4x8 table taken up. Just a little side note from the live stream to uh, went out rail fanning with my uh, train buddies and uh, one of them named uh, Liam happened to have a uh, O-scale controller, uh, which he actually ended up giving to me as a gift, which is pretty nice because this is a quite deluxe controller and uh, this whole thing is operating so much better. I didn't realize how many amps this engine actually needed to run properly. Drove past one of the last HCW cars today. Yeah, it's out in some uh, industrial mining. I, I think it's an old sand pit or something uh, just outside Wakefield. I was so shocked when I saw that. It was sort of a bittersweet thing because on uh, one hand, it's sort of sad to see your the, kind of the last bit of your childhood train out sitting in a field rusting away. On the other hand, I thought all of them had been destroyed, so I was happy that one of them was still around. Yeah, nice if somebody could fix that thing up. Hey, SMT, can you run a Via Rail train with all your retro Santa Fe passenger cars? Yeah, yeah, I don't see why not. That's what we'll do with the uh, Bombardier, uh, I want to say LRT, that's not what it's called, LRC. 
Can you install DCC on an Atherin band drive? On paper, yes. It's probably not a good idea though, just because um, those band driven engines have really, uh, I mean, most of those are over like 60 years old and they've got uh, super inefficient motors. And decoders just don't perform very well with old motors, especially because uh, they draw a lot of amps. So um, it, it would probably work, but you might end up burning out the decoder. That's, uh, that's what I think would probably end up happening. Of course, if you wanted to be really elaborate, what you could do is you could order up some neodymium magnets, clean the motor up really good, clean out the little spaces on the commutator, and if you're lucky, you might be able to get the uh, amps low enough that the decoder will work fine with it. But you need to be careful with that. Opinion on the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. I don't really know enough about it to have an opinion on it. What makes the trains you bought off eBay shady? Well, I knew nothing about them. They were sold as is. I mean, it's not really shady model trains. They're model trains. They're not that shady, but uh, I don't know. I just have fun buying those kind of like sketchy lots, and I just find it kind of fun just playing it up a bit too. It's a, ooh, some shady trains. A few of them are kind of shady though. <laughs> One of them, I don't know. It looks, it runs, surprisingly but it's in very rough shape. Buying model trains off the dark web. That would be exciting. I bet like 90% of those dark web videos though are fake. I mean, I don't know. Going on the dark web first of all is not a very bright thing to do, but I don't know, buying some stuff off of there. <laughs> Seems like asking for trouble. <laughs> the dark web isn't a good idea in the first place. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. I, uh, I've heard some stories about people who have gone on there personally, and <laughs> all I can say is I wouldn't. SMT wish me good luck starting to make my childhood train and it's called the Fremont Elk Valley Railroad. Unfortunately, the railroad closed in 2015. I'm still keeping it alive. Right on. All right, so what we need now is a conversion car so we can actually hook this up to the proper couplers and then it uh, should be good. Hola, senor. Hey, Dan, what's up? Do you have any of the rebuilt uh, via F40PH2Ds? I don't have any of those, now. Now, not only is it via, which is headquartered in Quebec, but it's also a Bombardier. Bombardier has a uh, really cool history, too. I highly recommend uh, people searching it up. Because it's pretty remarkable how uh, a local mechanic, basically, man out of a small uh, Quebec town, managed to become an industrialist and invent the snowmobile. And then his company ended up growing into uh, an international manufacturer of all sorts of different pieces of transportation. They build planes. Yeah, I think they're still building small jets, and uh, I think they're still building uh, light rail vehicles, too. I know they've exited a lot of industries, unfortunately, but uh, they're still around, and uh, BRP is actually doing better than ever right now, which is good, because that's really where Bombardier started. So it's at least at their core, you know, they're still making what they do best.
Hey, SMT was buying the shady model trains a bit or buy it now. It was a buy it now. I don't want to spoil too much of this video though. I feel like it's not going to be as exciting. SMT, have you ever counted how many locomotives you have? I haven't done that in a while. I probably should. I'm kind of curious. What is your train table made out of? The top layer is a material called homosote. It's great because you can nail stuff right into it. Um, below that, it's just plywood. Obviously put on a frame. And uh, that's, that's for table. This table was built specifically as a train table. Uh, the second table, uh, this actually used to be our uh, dining room table at one point. And uh, then my parents uh, changed the style of the house and they didn't want it anymore. So that became the uh, train table. Then the third one is just a piece of plywood, which was uh, thrown onto some demi shelves, which happened to be the same height. How many more locomotives do you have than pieces of rolling stock? I don't know if I have more locomotives than rolling stock or not. I'd have to, all, uh, have to tally it all up one day. Video calls, buying trains from that guy in an alleyway. That sounds sketchy. SMT, have you ever heard of the Branson Scenic Railway? I'm going to be going there in August. Uh, sorry, sorry for asking so much. I can't say I have heard of that railway. Run the oldest built locomotive in your collection. I don't know which it is. It could be the Varney. It could be the Hiawatha. I don't actually know because I don't know the age of the Varney. That Hiawatha you have is extremely expensive. Yeah, they're worth a lot of money. Um, there are a few things which I don't know if people know. I mean, first of all, the one, like, you know, because I, I, I've had so many people send me a link from uh, a Hiawatha, which is on eBay right now, and it's going for uh, 3400 American dollars. And, you know, I, I people send me that link, and they're like, SMT, this is crazy. I didn't know the Hiawathas were worth $3,500. But that engine's been there for years, and uh, there was one that went up for auction, um, I think it was like late last year, and I think it went for $800, which is more what the market value for those things are. They're not worth thousands of dollars, and that one was in good condition. And uh, the one I have, too, uh, actually has a lot of damage on it in various places. So it's not that it's worthless, but it's certainly not a $3,000 engine. But it means uh, more to me in sentimental value than any, any other kind of value. Hey, SMT, what really got you into model trains? I've been into trains my whole life. Um, what got me into model trains was my dad, because he actually had uh, the trains when he was a kid. And uh, one night, I think it was in 2006, uh, we were going over to my grandparents' house uh, just for fun. And my dad said, I'm going to show you all my old uh, trains from when I was a kid. And we went over there and we went digging through uh, this pile of stuff under a staircase. And we pulled out this big bin. And uh, inside were all of his trains. And uh, yeah, he showed me them all uh, individually. I was just blown away. And then at the end of that night... He said, you can uh, take one home if you want. And that just so happened to be um, not this exact engine, but one that's identical to it, an old uh, CN Lifelike, which uh, still runs, by the way. And then for that, that was towards the end of 2006. And for Christmas, I obviously, I just went and asked for a train set after seeing that. And then it started. This uh, engine right here is actually part of my uh, original collection. I think I started off with... Let's see, I had a CN one, I had this VO one, and I had a steam engine. So, plus my dad's old one. So I started off with four. Do you like intermodal trains? Yeah, I do.
You were the first channel I watched when I was getting into model trains. That's cool. I want to do uh, more videos uh, giving people entering the hobby advice because uh, I think a lot of people have a lot of questions. I mean, I, I know anybody can just go out and buy a starter set, but uh, I think that there's a, a lot of other parts which are still very intimidating about the hobby and... You know, I'm not even 100% sure if buying a starter set's the best way to get into the hobby. I mean, it's certainly the easiest, which is a, a good thing. But uh, if, if you're willing to be a little bit more adventurous, you can definitely uh, put together something a lot more interesting for less money. But it's riskier. Is the railroad crossing in the background real? The uh, Xing is not, but the lights are. That was a, a gift from my uh, grandparents years ago. They went and bought those lights, and uh, they had told me, because they had asked me for my birthday, um, we can either take you to Merrickville, or if you want, you can get these lights. So I thought I was just getting the lights, and then when they showed up, it turned out they had built this, you know, whole incredible railroad crossing, which was uh, amazing. Really, really cool. My first starter set was a Bachman Santa Fe F3 set. Nice. The railroad crossing is real. SMT's grandparents stole a whole railroad crossing. Yeah, I'm sure they did. They just went and popped it right out of the ground. Bye. Been working on the layout at all. Not a crazy man. I did sp spend a fair amount of time recently uh, cleaning things up down here. Uh, to a lot of you, that might not be uh, perfectly obvious, but uh, I'll tell you, if you watch this streamer video from a couple weeks ago, I'm sure you'd notice a difference. This thing seems to be bogging down, and the current draw is rather high, so I think I probably should stop this thing before I burn out the motor. Yeah, wow. Something's not quite right about this locomotive. I don't know what exactly, but uh, it's never run perfectly. It's done that a uh, couple times before. Yeah, some team thinking about starting a model railroading channel on YouTube. How should I start out getting trains and getting my railway ready? I would probably go to a hobby shop, honestly. I find that's the best way, I think, to get into the hobby. I mean, you can go buy all your stuff online. Um, but if, if you have a good hobby shop in your area, they can point you to what you should get, which is a terrific thing. That's actually how I mostly got when I was building my first layout and everything. Um, we actually went to my local hobby shop and they gave us a ton of advice on how we should go about building a layout. They're the ones who suggested homosote as the material. Um, so the, yeah, that would, that'd probably be what I would do. Go to a, go to a hobby shop. If I, I, <laughs> there's a lot of pieces of advice I can give you. There's just so much of it. I don't really know where to start there. Which is, again, why I think I want to make more videos uh, on that exact subject. So hopefully you can help more people get into the hobby specifically. This little Grand Trunk engine's running pretty nice, eh? SMT, what grass would you recommend for a layout? I buy all Woodland Scenics grass. I don't really know a whole lot of other manufacturers. The kind I use is I don't even know I thought it said what kind it was it just says fine turf green grass is that actually the right kind hold on a moment here okay these appear to be identical 
No, they're not actually. Okay, this is the darker green. I usually go with the uh, blended kind. I just find the others are a little bit too dark, which I, I don't find is very authentic. I mean, for forest scenes, you might want to use a, a darker color, but uh, for just general grass, this is what I use. And you can see it's actually, there are just little bits of uh, yellow turf thrown in there, and it just lightens it up a little bit. And I've been using that ever since. I like that. What kind of grass do you use? Green grass, apparently. <laughs> this thing has got some oomph. Wow. Nobody's ignored in the comments, just so many to scroll off screen before Harrison may see them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I never intentionally ignore comments. I know there are some people that uh, feel like I do or I select them out in the chat. But the truth is that, first of all, for some reason, YouTube just favors certain people's comments over others. I don't know why. I wish I had an explanation. Uh, but the other thing is, yeah, if there's, you know, 164 people all trying to talk at the same time, uh, some people are not going to get hurt at the same time, but uh, I try my best to, to read as many comments as I can, but just know it's nothing personal against you unless you're putting bad comments. I somehow doubt that's an ather and it seems too speedy. What's a, let's say, uh, Lionel? Molded in Canada, as a matter of fact. And this is a slightly newer model, which actually basically is a Bachman drive in it. I prefer the other one. What's your favorite cheap starter set engine? I know all about O-Gage, but I'd like to start a small HO layout. I don't know to tell you the truth. Um, I find Walters and stuff, like, I, I personally am more prefer... I like Walters more than Bachman as a budget manufacturer, but their starter sets are a lot more expensive than Bachman. And uh, my advice for a while has been, you know, just buy the cheapest Bachman train set. I certainly wouldn't buy a high-end Bachman train set. Uh, after buying that one recently, um, they're okay, but um, yeah, this would be my advice. If you have the funds to buy a more expensive train set, buy a Walters or some other manufacturer. If you have uh, limited funds, you want to buy something cheap, buy the cheapest Bachman train set. But avoid the big expensive deluxe one because I don't find you get a very good value. It's like the base train set gives you a loop, a track, a controller, and a small train. The big set costs about, you know, double, sometimes three times the price, but you get a bit more track and a, you know, you don't get as much. Like, you could probably buy two of Bachman's cheapest train sets and, and get more value for your money than buying one of their big sets. Yeah, this engine's not running near to as well as the other one. Oh, yeah, I forgot that these cars lit up. No wonder the current draw is so high. It's because it's also powering all those uh, old incandescent lights. I enjoy your videos. Thanks. How can you tell what brand your HO skill train is if it doesn't say on the bottom? It's something you kind of have to develop an eye for. Um, sometimes where it's manufactured can give you some information. So uh, if it says Yugoslovania, it's usually uh, an AHM. Uh, if it says, well, if it says RSO, a lot of people think RSO is a manufacturer, but that's also AHM. Uh, trying to think. Here's one that I don't think is branded usually. Let me find one. Yeah, if uh, the bottom of your locomotive looks like this, 
This is a uh, Roco, which was also a model power. I'm trying to think of other ones which might not be specifically labeled. Those are the two that come to mind, but there are other manufacturers which I know uh, have done the same. Of course, you can always, you know, take a picture of your engine and post it on, like, uh, you know, model railroading subreddit and ask people because some uh, knowledgeable person in the community will be able to identify it. SMT mainline excursion service. Not terribly reliable, apparently. All right, let's put something else on. Let's see if this old lifelike has got what it takes. SMT, what do you think is the best brand of locomotives to buy? If you're buying used stuff and you want to buy it cheap, I'd probably say Ather and Blue Box. Uh, Cato's pretty good. Rapido's pretty good. I can't say what modern Ather is like. Uh, I've never worked with Inner Mountain, so I'm not so sure. Uh, Walters is pretty decent, I find. I don't think of other modern manufacturers. Bachman's been a bit mixed bag in my books. Uh, Broadway, I haven't had any bad experiences with Broadway Limited personally, but I've heard some other people have had mixed experiences, so take that with what you will. Now, those are the ones I can think of. SMT, do you have any Australia trains? I do, yeah. Got, uh, well, actually, one of the Broadway Limited engines I have is uh, from Australia, which is uh, this one right here. Okay, so the lifelike uh, seems to be struggling a little bit. Let's give it the full power here. Seems like the uh, drive system is failing a bit on this lifelike. Might not have enough weight to pull this. Enough of that engine. Hey, SMT, how often do you do live streams? Because I think I'm missing a lot of them. Uh, not as much as I once was. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I might start up a, a separate channel for live streaming just because I find at this point a lot of the people that watch the live streams are not necessarily the same people who enjoy the videos because the live streams are just very different from, you know, the videos I make on this channel. So it might be a wise idea to separate the two. Um, but uh, yeah, I've not been doing a crazy amount of those. Anyway, uh, I was looking for... Oh, I left it over there, the conversion car. So we can run... Uh, go back and yeah, no, don't start smoking, please. Smoking's for steam locomotives there, bud. Oh, we got a super chat. Controller Packers, hey, SMT. Glad to see you back online. Thank you so much. And thanks for the uh, super chat. 
or make a Twitch. Eh, I don't know. Never used Twitch before. It might be worth trying out, but I find YouTube streaming is really not bad. It's always worked fine for me. Now the live stream and vid combo makes this channel. Well, there's one opinion that may be different. Have we talked about the Hershey factory layout? Uh, I don't know if you were here when we were discussing that, but yeah, basically, uh, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm aiming for August. What's your favorite piece of rolling stock? Interesting. Uh... I don't know, there's a lot of different choices. Just trying to think here. There's so many different different ones. They're all so different. That's the big thing. Uh, I think the most interesting piece of rolling stock I probably have is this thing. I don't know. This is what's coming to mind right now. I'd have to I'd have to think about that more. You should add a candy store to your layout. It has one. That's what uh, this little number is. Hey, SMT, I really want to thank you for your repair videos. Because of that, I was able to get a lot of my old HO scale trains running, including my dad's Bachman Santa Fe F3 war bonnet. Number 307. That's absolutely awesome. I love hearing stories about uh, people getting their old uh, trains going again. And uh, the truth is, too, it can really be satisfying. It's like, you know, the, the first time you fix something up or attempt to fix something up, it usually doesn't go that well. Um, I find that's my experience, and it's pretty much everyone's experience. You know, you just don't know what you're doing as much. But the first time you actually get something going and it works... It's just amazing, especially if it's something that's uh, sentimental. Like the Hiawatha, that engine would probably still not be running today had I not attempted it. I mean, I'd taken it to multiple hobby stores, but, you know, they just don't have the time and resources to be working on something like that. Um, I took it on, and, and now a uh, family heirloom uh, works again. Is the SMT Mainline Train Club on the layout? It is, yeah. It's over here. Need to clean up the downtown here a, a, a lot, obviously, but it has a home. Maybe add a Hershey truck behind the candy stores if it's giving supplies from the Hershey factory. I like that idea. Hershey Canada Inc. truck. Northern Railroad. Cyrus and Sam convinced thousands of people to either, uh, dislike or either Bubbles got Cordy and Trevor to make a lot of accounts. Like, bit it out, messed up the hit, the dislike. <laughs> yeah, Northern Country Railroad a few days ago. I was watching a video about the show, The Trailer Park Boys, and I was a bit shocked to see him right there in the comments. So I said hi, so that's what he's uh, talking about right now. Great show, by the way. Liam McColgan, thank you so much for the super chat. Also, uh, shout out to him for the uh, mint new uh, controller. I was running that thing earlier. Yo, Harrison, take my $2 when you're going to get those clearly superior train buddies over for a live stream. Uh, I don't know. When you guys want to come over, let me know. Get the whole Udaway, Ottawa Valley Udaway speeder lads all up for a visit, and we can be running trains, causing trouble uh, on the live streams. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble getting this engine on the track. It doesn't even have a coupler. Oh, well, let's let that go around for a lap and... SMT, have you seen uh, Unstoppable 777? 
It's not on Netflix anymore, but it is on YouTube. I assume that's a documentary about crazy... Oh, Unstoppable. Well, that's just Unstoppable. I thought you were talking about Crazy 8s. Is the 20k flat car still around? Yeah, it is. It, uh... I need to make a better display for it, but... It actually, uh, stays right up here. Such a cool car. What are your plans for the mountain area on the layout? I got a kind of elaborate one. Um, I just want to finish this, make the village look proper, and then, um, the plan is to fill in this area right here, bring the mountain down, make some landscape here, maybe build a shopping mall, I don't know. Uh, and then right here, I want to uh, extend that out. I want this to be cornered. We're gonna extend this out a little bit, link up the factory, link up this layout, put the circus here. Yeah, overall, kind of just bring everything together. So we'll see how that all goes. Huh, this also does not have a coupler. Well, around it goes. Oh, no. Big plans, little time. Yep, big plans, limited time, money, and energy. But, in the words of Johnny Cash, we build it one piece at a time. SMT, you have 32.8k subscribers, yeah. This engine's uh, being uh, a little bit difficult today. Yeah, I honestly just can't believe that. It's wild last year when the channel hit 10k. I never would have imagined this. I mean, uh, the intention was never to you know, really make a, a YouTube channel. I sort of just started throwing videos on here and stuff like that. And uh, then it turns into this. It's not a bad thing. I'm not arguing with it. I'm, I'm thrilled, but it's just not what you would expect to happen. Stranger Things shopping mall. Yeah, something like that. I'd like to build something interesting. I have a, a thing with dead malls. I find those very fascinating. Cincinnati Forest Fair Village, Cincinnati Mills, happens to be my favorite of the bunch. That'd be way too big to build an HO scale though, that would take up like the entire basement. Where did you get the fiberglass pencil? It was sent to me, but um, they're not hard to find. Just go on eBay, search for a uh, fiberglass pencil. You'll find one. It might be, I don't know, maybe in some regions they're hard to get though, because I know that glass fibers are considered a health hazard, so I don't know if maybe certain states in America with more regulations about that stuff may, uh, may have banned them. I don't know. I hope you can get to 50k for the end of the year. That would be really, uh, really cool if uh, the channel got that far. I think that's uh, a pretty elaborate number to get to, but um, I, uh, I'm just happy uh, with with what it's turned into, honestly. The H of Scale Mall of America would take up the rest of the basement real estate. Yeah, it sure would. Or uh, that new mall they've just built called uh, American Dream. I don't know if anybody knows about that mall, but uh, that is a crazy story. American Dream Mall. Uh, do you always stream late, SMT? 
it's not necessarily my goal to upload videos late at night or stream late at night. I find it's just what they turn into. You know, I, I don't know. Stuff happening throughout the day and then at night, it's the really the best time to stream. Because the thing is that during the day, um, there's, you know, people doing things upstairs and stuff. There's a lot of activity here. So if I wanted to, like, film videos and stuff during the day, it's just kind of tricky because I find there's just a lot of interference. And uh, I'm just up to more things so it gets tricky maybe you should build an HO scale West Edmonton mall I think that would also probably that would probably be bigger than uh, all these tables combined I think I think I want to make a fictional one but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have it inspired off of Forest Fair, probably. How about building a strip mall? Strip malls are boring. They don't have an interior or anything. I want with lights and all sorts of other uh, stuff happening. Can't believe strip malls right now are, are, are beating conventional malls. I mean, a lot of malls are, are pretty boring, too, but... Uh, I don't know, all the outdated ones from the 80s and 70s and stuff like that, they don't look great, but they're very interesting. I'm a huge fan of the, uh, of the older ones. Alex64, yo, happy St. Jean-Baptiste Day. Yeah, it's the same to you. Build an H of scale Target Canada. Yeah, so I can get rid of it. The mall in my uh, city is pretty small. Gatno has a pretty interesting, it's the oldest mall in the region. I think it's from like 1965, Place Cartier. And I think they've roped it off, but there's an entire hallway of that mall which has nothing in it. Like you just walk through and it's just empty storefronts. And uh, it's become a popular uh, attraction amongst uh, people in my age group because I guess it attracts that whole kind of like uh, dim sort of disastrous thing which my generation is somewhat obsessed with. But also um, on uh, Black Friday when uh, people are, you know, trashing doors to get into stores, people go to that mall so they can take pictures of themselves in a place with no other people. It's, it's really strange. I think I may have been to that mall a year or two going for a festival. I had one drawing contest. SMT, do you get most of your items off eBay? I have been lately, but that's just because um, up until a few weeks ago, all the train stores uh, in Ontario were all closed, and we don't currently have any uh, near me on this side of the border, so that was a problem. But... Um, I, I don't actually find it. Like, I like eBay. It, it's a, a fun fun place to look around for stuff, but uh, the deals on eBay are, are usually not that great. There's a lot of people that will argue about that. And uh, if you live in the States, the deals are definitely better just because everything is priced in American dollars and you don't have to pay custom fee customs fees and stuff. But uh, I find, especially in Canada, it's really tough to get good deals on eBay. I've done it, but it's rare. thing I uh, do like about eBay, though, is unlike Amazon, at least you do have that whole mom and pop kind of thing. Because a lot of eBay sellers are either actually running real train stores, so it actually helps to keep them afloat. And uh, just a lot of, you know, sellers on eBay are just individuals. So I like that aspect of it. What if you build Larkspur Line Mall? Well, that would be pretty easy to do. I think I want something a bit more grand, though. Maybe a two-story complex. Maybe I'll build it without a roof, too, because the thing is, like, if I build a mall and I seal it up, nobody's going to be able to look inside, but... 
I don't know. Maybe it could be one of those things where there's like a wall missing or something so people can actually look in it and uh, see all the figures and everything. And I'll definitely have to put a Cinnabon inside of it too because uh, every good mall has a Cinnabon in it. I don't know, it'd probably be something uh, kind of like the mall at Steamtown. I think that's what I'd aim for. You can model the media center here in Burbank. It's small, but not too small. And yes, they do have a Cineball. Well, that's a good start. I'll have to look into that. Have you ever been to Expo Rail in Montreal? Yes, uh, in uh, 2013. I want to go back there again at some point in the not so distant future. Wow, this thing can creep. Sincerely impressed. What a good runner. If you build it, they will watch. SMTS Edmonton Mall is bigger than Mall of America. I was not aware of that, actually. That's pretty cool. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any other special locomotives from Quebec I should run. I think uh, I think I've got all the big ones. So yeah, I think I'll probably call it a stream because it's almost uh, eleven o'clock, and I don't want to be uh, keeping the people of the grid upstairs awake. But yeah. Oh, Christian uh, Debbie, how are you? Uh, do you think that the Ottawa LRT will extend into Gatineau? I'm not so sure. There's been a lot of talk about that, but um, uh, I honestly don't think that the city of Ottawa is actually motivated to do that just because um, if they build that, it's not going to benefit them. It will benefit Gatineau. Uh, so for housing prices and stuff like that, they're really uh, disincentivized to go and build something like that. But uh, hopefully Gatineau will. So we'll see. Anyway, I think I'm going to finish off the live stream because uh, it's getting kind of late. But I'd like to thank you all so much for joining in and everybody uh, who celebrates St. Jean-Baptiste Day. Happy St. Jean-Baptiste Day. Anyway, have a great night, everyone.